two main things that you learn when you first start boxing, jab and footwork. I don't think it was anything that really put him in danger, but it certainly spoiled his usual momentum that he's able to build and really destroy people with. Thank you, Michael. This is Raina Roan with your KO Fight Cast. You learn it from YouTube. Somebody's gonna break your jaw while you're trying to throw the uppercut on the left foot. Welcome to Knockouts Unlimited. I'm your host, Michael Opdyke. I'm your host, Joshua Burns. We've got some wonderful fights to talk about today. I think the first fight we're going to start with is Ajagbe and Shaw. Josh, this was a really, we'll say neutrally paced fight. Neither man seemed to have a sense of urgency or seemed to want to really dedicate themselves to any true offense. It seemed like a war of jabs. What did you think? Mm -hmm. I agree with you, Michael. Um, I thought that Ajabe started slow. Um, Shaw did good. He showed that he had a lot of boxing skills. He, he used movement, he used some angles, and he kind of threw Ajabe off a little bit. I think that Ajabe started late utilizing his jab, and therefore he got late, a late start in the building of the fight itself. But all in all, he did what he had to do to get um, the win, secure the win. But I would like for him to take more time out utilizing a jab, using more movement. I did not see a lot of head move, movement from a jab bay. And I definitely look forward to seeing him have more head movement because a lot of his fights, he pick up the same pace, he with the same style, and very little lateral, lateral movement. And I noticed that Shaw capitalized on a lot of that. Absolutely. And speaking of movement, Let's move on to another fight that did involve quite a bit of movement, quite a good amount of lateral movement, and some interesting use of different guards, the Eubanks Jr. and Smith fight. For that first round, we saw Eubanks Jr. being extremely relaxed and being or using his long guard. It seemed that Smith, using his tight high guard, had a bit of a hard time getting in, but around the second round and third round, we saw him making headway, using good shoulder feints, and by the fourth, he was able to set up a very, very beautiful TKO. What are your thoughts on it, Josh? My thoughts was, I think Eubanks was confused with which style he wanted to fight with. You know, since he picked up training with Roy Jones Jr., he tried to adapt some of that style within his, his fighting. We're talking about a fighter that has had, had several fights as a professional. He's seasoned, and he came in looking to establish a different style within the fight. Um, I think he could have utilized a little more lateral movement, um, a little upper body movement and everything, but he didn't utilize it. And it just, it, he didn't come across as a fighter with a lot of confidence in that fight. Hmm. I think it was from the training that he had. I think he was confident as him being Eubanks Jr., but as the fighter with a different style, different trainer, um, I, don't, I didn't see that confidence show. He tried, to, he tried to fight in the um, Roy Jones Jr. style, and that didn't suit well for him. And to his demise, he got caught fighting in that style. Certainly. We did see him try to use several beautiful uppercuts as he maintained that long guard within the first round, as I said. But to your point, Smith maintained a good amount of confidence in his style with that tight, high guard and was able to use excellent shoulder feints, moving inside and using that lateral movement that you've talked about for the last two fights, really, to get inside and ultimately get that knockout. Yes, and Smith, and Smith did what he had to do. He came in and um, he took it to, to Eubanks Jr., but he didn't take it to him as fighting. He took it to him looking to, to wear Eubanks Jr. down, and that's what he did. He just kept the high guard up and just kept coming forward. If you've been Eubanks Jr., you should know how to uh, fight a person like that, fight a style like that. You utilize your jab, use punches and step to the side, use your angles. He did not do any of that. And that's why the fight ended up like it did. Hopefully he get back to the drawing board and get back on a winning um, streak. Absolutely. And speaking of fighters who are boring down their opponents, let's talk about the Roka Ashi fight. Roka came out really nice at the start of this yes. fight, using great jabs and great head movements. And then it seemed like Ashy was able to kind of draw him into a game of rock or sock him. 
What did you think? Yes, and that Rapham Sahum, it, it always ends up bad for someone. And that's what happened. It ended up bad for him. <laughs> but it was an interesting fight. It turned out to be, to be good, entertaining for the fans. And that's what we like to see, entertaining fights. But a lot, fights like that do a lot of damage to fighters within their career. We spoke about this off camera, how, mm. how that can take longevity off your career. But it's entertaining for the fans. That's what the fans want to see. That's what the fighters want to do to, to make more money. Um, and that generated a lot of interest in that fight because of the skill level that they had, the fighting ability that they had, and plus they were sitting right there in front of each other. So it made for a very entertaining fight. And to that point of our off-camera discussion about fighter longevity and being able to make an entertaining fight and also fight intelligently, I think that we have to go ahead and talk about Foster and Vargas. Yes. There was a fight where you saw two fighters pushing the pace while also using excellent movement, excellent hand defenses, and really just keeping a great show going. Yes, and you, you saw Shaki demonstrate what good boxing could do to someone and come in and try to walk straight through you. I don't think that Shaki went in trying to knock his opponent out. I went in thinking or thinking that he was going to go in and get an easy victory. He stuck with the game plan. He showed this is how you create a game plan during training camp, and this is how you go ahead and perfect it in the fight. Because that's what he did. He perfected the game plan to the T. Good movement, good angles, good body work, good jabbing, good counter punching. Everything was good. Everything showed that he practiced that in the gym, and he was ready. He was 100% ready for this fight. And speaking of game plan, looking at Vargas's game plan, it almost was like they were waiting for Foster to get very tired yes and he never worn wore down we then saw vargas try to pick up the pace in the seventh eighth and ninth round which yeah. i think you could argue he won but ultimately it tired him out so much that we even saw him slip and go to a knee multiple times in the last two rounds and that can be that can be a problem of waiting on someone to tire when you wait for them to tire you're running out of time and he ran out of time but this will conclude this segment we will be back after this commercial break. It's not about where you were born. It's not about your gender. Or the color of your skin. Or whether you're rich, poor, or in the middle. No matter what you play, if you have the skill and drive to succeed in school and in sports, we'll provide Jason, let's go see your room. What do you think? We kept it a little spare so you can decorate it how you like. Welcome back to Knockouts Unlimited. So let's finish speaking about that previous fight that we were um, discussing. The rock and sopping robots. <laughs> they, we do not want to see that going on in boxing. And that fight was started to turn into it, but it did end with a devastating hook. And it showed that if you live and die by the punches, that's what you're going to live and die by. Absolutely. Live by the sword, die by the sword. And unfortunately, Somebody always goes out whenever you have two individuals with high power and high pace trading hooks and round shots like that. But now we're going to throw it over to our newest segment, Big Sugar Ray Phillips Declassified. 
This is Big Sugar Ray's real deal. I was a world top contender of the world. I fought Marcus Mark Hagler for the title. I had 350 amateur fights, national champion, national AU champion. I've been around all the best fighters in the world, from Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson. Been around all the big trainers, Manu Stewart. You hear a lot of guys say they know a lot about boxing, but have they ever been there with them old time trainers like Eddie Futch? Uh, Johnny Taco, Manu Stewart, they all had hundreds of world champions and been around boxing all, all their life. The best way to learn this boxing is get around the old school training, like Mayweather did. Mayweather, I used to hip his uncle. Roger was his uncle. He's a two or three time featherweight champion of the world, but Roger had old school people around him all the time. This is what it takes for these fighters today. These fighters, they think they can get on YouTube, and find out everything about boxing, they were wrong. They get in the ring and get beat to death because you have to come up in the, the old school way. Get up in the morning, 5.30, 4.30, running you anywhere from three to five miles a day. Then come back and get you a little rest. Then go back to the gym by 12 o'clock. To be a world-class fighter like De La Hoya, he got old school trainers behind him. That's why you see these guys, these younger guys, they mislead, they think, that they want the bag of money, but you got to work hard for that bag of money. It's not gonna just fall in your lap. You, you, Ryan Garcia, now he gonna fight Tank, and so he, him and Tank gonna be a good fight, but he don't know when Tank take him in the deep water and hit him hard, he gonna try to stay away the best he can, but if he try to slug, slug with him, he got that Mexican blood in him, and the Mexican fighters, they tough, so you hit them, they wanna hit you back, but that's the wrong plan against Tank. You got to keep boxing, Tank. You got to keep boxing and keep boxing and keep boxing. You got the fast hands and everything, but can he, can he take them shots to the chin when they in close? Can he win when he's in close? That's another story. He, so if, if, if Ryan Garcia going to win this fight, he got to box him. He, he cannot stand there and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. As like Mike Tyson when he fought Lennox Lewis. Lennox Lewis, no, he couldn't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mike Tyson. So he mocked him. Man, you just said, jab him, slip back, hit him with an uppercut, didn't hit him with a right hand. That's the only way. That's the only way you can ever get in. Like when Lennox fought uh, Tommy Hearns, same thing. I'm at the fight at Caesars Palace. Hearns leading on all court, but Hearns get tired. He get tired. And then little that they say, turn it up, son. And you just all in, he's behind you. Turn it up, turn it up. You have champion trainers in your corner that been around boxing all their life. They eat, breathe it, been around all their life. You cannot learn from something. You watch TV, how to learn to throw a jab. Now coming to these boxing gyms where it's top trainers, where the old school trainers is training, we'll show you how to throw a proper jab, proper left hook, proper uppercut. But if you learn it from YouTube, somebody's gonna break your job while you're trying to throw the uppercut or the left hook. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching Big Sugar Ray. Tell me the, some of the history about old school boxing. This has been declassified by Big Sugar Ray. Thank you so much, Sugar Ray. We will be back after this commercial break. Why would you bully me? Why would you bully me? Why would you bully me? Because it makes you feel cool? Because I'm different? Do I touch a nerve? Does making me feel bad make you feel good? Why? 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 Bullying hurts. Bullying abuses. Bullying kills. Why would you bully me? Let me tell you who to blame. Blame the boy lying at your feet, his body oozing life through the hole in his stomach where the bullet tore him apart. Blame him for challenging you, for not looking away and for not backing down when you pulled out the gun. Blame your mother for bringing you into this world when she was but a kid herself and for dragging you up, not bringing you up. Blame society for not giving you hope. Blame your father for not being there, the man who looked after himself instead of looking after you. Blame the gun in your hand for making you a target, for making you more likely to be picked on. 
Blame the dead boy, blame your mother, blame society, blame your father, blame the gun, blame anyone but yourself for not being strong enough to put down the gun, to break the cycle. Now, Josh, before we talk about fights that have come up or that are coming up and that we're excited about, I want to talk about the Better Beef Yard fight. Yes, let's talk about that. Truly an excellent fight. And I think this kind of goes along with our theme of wanting to see intelligent boxing, a fast pace, and a fight that's exciting that the fans will be able to enjoy. Yard was excellent with his use of his lead hand, whether it was his jab or his check hook. Better Beef had some excellent inside fighting but Yard was able to really maintain a strong pace. Ultimately, though, we saw Better Beef come out on top. Yes, we did. And he came out on top the way we thought he would come out on top. But I will say, at the beginning, the first couple of rounds, Yard confused Better Beef. He was doing a very good job moving, using his angles, and he kept punches coming at him. Actually, in the middle of the fight, he actually hurt Better Beef. He hurt him with a couple of punches, a couple of shots. And he showed that all it takes is movement and a good punch to land solid on Better Be, and you have a chance of winning. But to his demise, the power of Better Be was too much for him. And as everyone that Better, Better Be has faced, that's the case. The power just catches up to you at the end, and you just can't do anything about that when you're fighting that guy. You have to fight a perfect fight. Certainly. Anytime somebody has that one knockout erasure, you have to be so technically sound. But let's talk about a fight that's going to be technically sound that we're looking forward to, and that is the rematch of Taylor and Serrano. Now that first fight was fought at a sprinter's pace. Just furious fighting, excellent inside work, great jab work by Serrano, really excellent show of heart by Taylor to come back at the end and clinch the decision. Yes, it was a very good fight, but that fight, the second fight isn't happening because until um, Serrano gets past Erica Cruz, which she did in astounding fashion. She went in there and fought. Cruz, to her credit, came to fight. She brought the fight to Serrano and Serrano took care of business to make the second Taylor fight. And it's the fight everyone wants to see. It did very good numbers their first fight. The fight lived up to the hype. Hype, and that's what we wanted to see. The fight lived up to the hype. It showed that women's boxing is there and women's boxing should get credit. Um, Serrano and Taylor are very good fighters. They, they deserve everything that they get. I think it's gonna be a more technical fight from Taylor's standpoint because she did do good when she boxed more and moved around the ring instead of letting Serrano sit there and hit her and hurt her a couple of times like she did in that fight. I would hope Serrano boxes more this fight. She can box, but she likes going in there, getting to those slugs fast because she believes in her power. And I hope she goes in there and box more, but I'm very interested in seeing how this fight plays out. Certainly. I think for this next fight, I would love to see Taylor have a tighter guard, and I'd like to see her throw more combinations. We saw her throw lots of jabs and crosses, yeah. but you heard her corner calling multiple times for her to add hooks in. And I think that were she to add you know, a third or a fourth punch, she would have really found a lot of pay dirt when she was coming in and throwing those combinations in the later part of the fight. A lot of times when I see fighters do not throw certain punches that their corner is calling for, I know that they felt their, their opponent's power. And they're kind of cautious about trying to get that next punch off without getting caught. I think Serrano caught her attention. She caught her attention early and she was kind of hesitant. She was reluctant to throw the punches that her corner was asking for. And rightfully so. Serrano can punch for that division, for the women's fighters. She can really punch. And she went in there and showed Taylor that she belonged there and she was coming to win. She was coming to do everything she could do. But I look forward to seeing the next. So I look forward to seeing the game playing each one. Like I said, I think Taylor's going to come out and do more movement, do more boxing on the back foot. And she does that. I think she can box her way to vi victory. But if um, Serrano comes in, she changes up her, up her game plan, mix up brawling and boxing, I think she can come away with the victory. So that's the intrigue about this fight. Absolutely. Well, we're going to see sparks fly regardless of who wins. 
when they have this fight, especially since it's going to be over in Ireland. Yes. But speaking of fighters that really, really draw your attention, Davis and Garcia. It's official. It's been signed. It's a done deal. They will meet in April. This is a fight that has everyone talking. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. This is a fight that is going to be big time. Big time because Davis is a puncher. He's a knockout artist. Garcia is also a puncher. He's a knockout artist. And plus, he has a big social media following. So it's definitely going to do big numbers. Now we want to see if the big boxing skills come to the table. Is it just going to be a firefight? Or are we going to see a good IQ in the ring? I think that we're leaning more towards a good boxing IQ in this fight. Absolutely. I think it's going to be interesting, especially since you consider you have Davis with his one knockout power. Truly powerful. And on top of that, he has a high fight IQ. Yes. Then you have Garcia with his speed. His speed is very interesting because there is a bit of a sacrifice of defensive principles for the sake of the speed. And yet, he seems to be successful with it in spite of that lack of defense. Now, for me, I want to see what Tank does to really exploit those defensive holes. And see, this is a fight that you, it's, it's guaranteed that Tank will exploit it. And it's guaranteed that uh, Garcia will exploit something when Tank is, when you have good fighters fighting each other, you will get those exploits. But when one is exploited, that's what we want to see. What happens next? Do we have the fight that everybody thinks is going to be? Is it going to be a barn burner? Or will it just turn into one person gets caught and that's the end of the fight? So until then, until they fight? Absolutely. Well, now we're going to throw it over to our own Raina Roan with the KO Fight Cast. Take it away, Raina. Thank you, Michael and Josh. This is Raina Roan with your KO Fight Cast. Coming up on March 4th, we have Fierro versus Estella airing on The Zone. Also on March 4th, we have Figueroa versus Maxayo that'll be on Showtime. Then on March 11th, we have Sue versus Harrison also on Showtime. On March 11th, we also have Smith versus Stepien that'll be on The Zone. On March 16th, we have Pascal versus Eifert and that's gonna be on ESPN, also on ESPN. On March 18th, we have Pattinson and Jenkins on The Zone. On March 18th, we also have Ramirez and Rosado on The Zone as well. On March 23rd, we have Mabili and Gongora on ESPN. On March 25th, we have Ramirez and Comey on ESPN. Also on March 25th, we have Heaney and Flady on BT Sport. March 25th is a hot day for fighting. We have Benavides versus Plant on Showtime. And then also on March 25th, we have Okoli versus Light on Sky Sports. This is Raina Roan. This has been your KO Fight Cast. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Raina. She is really excellent keeping everybody informed about what fights are coming up. Yes, she is. It's always good to have someone like that bring the next fights coming up. Well, thank you as always for watching. We've been Knockouts Unlimited. I'm your host, Michael Opdyke. I'm your host, Joshua Burns. Catch you next time. This episode of Knockouts Unlimited was brought to you by the Blue Planet Media Group.